just to wash you, just to declare that you are coming. In this long, you deserve all our praises. You deserve all our adoration, O oh God. We bless you this wonderful morning that you are God. And that in your presence there is fullness of joy. Be with us and speak through us, Lord. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us have our sins. Praise God. For the sake of Vista, my name is Jackson Wanga, and above all, I love Christ as my personal Savior. I am humbled just to take this opportunity to bring the word of God. And I'll be sharing from the two readings that were read to us this morning. And specifically to the Gospel of Luke. And, uh, I will be talking about these two characters that came out from Luke chapter 18, from verse 9. The parable that the Lord Jesus himself shared to us when he was in the temple and brought out the parable of the tax collector and the parable of the Pharisees. When they were given opportunity each to pray, each had been given an opportunity to pray. And I want to highlight five uh, attitudes that Jesus condemned in the lives or in the prayer life of a Pharisee. And when I share about this, I want to say that you do not need to study the Gospels closely for you to identify the attitudes that come out from the Pharisees. Most of these behaviors reoccurs in the lives of spiritually minded people. So we must pay attention to Jesus' crit criticisms and search our hearts for the same attitudes. Here are five things that Jesus condemned in the lives of Pharisees. Number one, Jesus condemned that they overburdened people. The Pharisees gave themselves the positions of high in the temple of the Lord. And because the temple of the Lord was the center of governance, those days we didn't have the state house, we didn't have the other departments. Everything was being done in the temple. So the Pharisees took advantage to overburden the people. And in Matthew chapter 23 verse 4, it says, they, they tie up heavy, cumbersome loads, and put on them on other people's shoulders. But they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. One thing that the tax collectors were doing, they were people leading the temple, but they were not leading by examples. They were leading people to do things, but them not able to do. When it came to taxes, they were taxed people, but themselves never taxed. If you looked on the books of the tax collectors, you'd realize that the books never had any of their names in those books. But they would condemn people who were not giving, but themselves were not giving. That is one of the burdens that they had put on the tax on the people. They pushed people to give. It's like they had put on the people a yoke. You know, 
the yoke that is put on the cow, animals, so when they are going to farm or to carry luggages, the guy who is controlling the animals don't have the don't carry those yoke, but it's animals who carry the yokes. So they pull the yoke on the people, but themselves never carry the yoke. And therefore Jesus condemns us and admonishes us that we should put ten people to do what we do. One yes as if you were. That we should never at any time in our lives put people to do things we do not do. Some of us who have house girls or house boys, we put them on luggages to do some of things ourselves cannot do. God is reminding us this morning that let us tell them to do only what we can also do. When I yes us the people. Number two, they decided that they were mot motivated by attentions. They were motivated by attentions. And in the same look, Matthew chapter 20, uh, 3 verse 5 to 7 says, Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their... Uh, and they make their things by looking for attentions. Nothing they do, that they do everything. You know when they are doing something and people started walking around or making noise, they will stop and accuse those people to be quiet so that they hear what they are doing. But they don't want to listen to others what they are doing. This happens to us as a pastors. We want to tell you to do things that we ourselves don't want to do. This happens to leaders. Could be meta leaders, could be department leaders, could be leaders in society. Could be leaders in the family where parents want children to do things that they themselves are not doing. I learned that when I tell my children to perform, I don't tell them that I did it well. I tell them I didn't do it well, but I'm pushing you so that you do it better than what I did. Not to put them on a scenario that I did it very well, so you must do it more also well the way I did. No. As parents, we need to teach our children to do things that we did, and if we are pushing them to do better than what they we did, we should be clear to tell them that yes, I didn't do this, but I need you to do because I, I know if I would have done better, I would not be where I am. One yes as few. So we should be people of example in whatever we do. Not to look to ensure that we need attention. But we don't need that when other people need our attentions, we are not there for them. As much as you need somebody's attention, also be sure that when that person needs your attention, you be there for him. What a yes as a viewer. So that is number two, that the tax collectors were putting people in this scenario. They needed every time people to hear to have attention for them. But them. They never had attention for people. And you can see when people are sick, even on Sabbath, they could not go and attend to them. Number three, they made it hard to enter God's kingdom. They made it hard for you to see the kingdom of God. In Matthew 23, verse 13, they say, Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You yourselves do not enter, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. These are people who 
want to people to and say that if it is not me, it is me. I like the way he always put his very safety. These are people, if they are not entering, you are not entering. If they are not doing A, B, C, D, then you are not doing X, Y, Z. So there are people who make it hard for others to enjoy life. It is them to enjoy, not others to enjoy. It is just them. If they are pastors like me, we need you to do things so that I enjoy, but not you enjoy. We push you to do it, but not us ourselves do it. Jesus told that we should do it by our examples. Jesus said that it was the sick who were most in need of a physician. And his behavior demonstrated his, this truth. He didn't avoid sinners. He spent time with them. They were drawn to him. These people never needed people who, people who were not. Even when you fall sick, they forgot about you. you know, when you had a challenges, they threw you up uh, far away and they forgot about you. These are people, everything they needed is about themselves, but not anyone else. Friends, we should be careful not to be like them. We should be different in our lives. We should be people who show the way that let go this direction, but not to tell people, you go that direction. But we ourselves, ourselves, we are not going that direction. And number four, number four, they neglected mercy, they neglected justice, and they neglected faithfulness. They never had mercy on others. They never had justice on others, and yet they were never, they never. Faithful. They were never faithful. And lastly, they focused entirely on external righteousness. There are people when they walked, they walked with holy people. When whatever they did, people would see. You can see even on food, they could not eat things. They would say this is forbid, for, for, forbidden. But they go and do it. And when the time came for prayer, how they prayed, you could see how they focused on the five things I have mentioned. When the time came for prayer, they prayed about themselves, what they do. You know I do this, you know I do that. The Pharisee stood apart by himself and prayed, I thank you, God, that I am not greedy. Yes, they are overburdening people, putting people taxes that they are not giving themselves. But they are saying, thank you, God, that I am not greedy. Thank you, God, that I am honest. Yes, they are not, they are not, they are dishonest. Thank you, God, that I am not adulterous. I am not fornicators. Yes, they are fornicators and they are adulterers. I am not like everyone else who do, uh, who do, who do those things. Me, I am not doing them. But they were the same people who were doing them. I am not like a tax collector who overburdened people to give taxes. I fast two days a week. I give you a tenth of all my income. You can see the things they mentioned in their prayer. 
I should be listening for you when you are praying. I, should, I will stay praying and then start listening when you are praying to hear how you pray. Do you pray like this guy? How who believes that he is holy than thou? The holy than thou people. People who believe that no one else is holy. If no, it's only them. And you can contrast with the prayer of a tax collector who stood and said, But the tax collector stood at a distance and would not even raise his face to heaven. You know them, they were praying, saying, You know, I am, I, I don't, I am not greedy. I am honest, I am not dishonest. I am not like a tax collector. But him, even he was not able to raise his face up. And he said, But beat his chest and say, God, how pity on me. How pity on me, a sinner. When I yes, as a field. We should learn humility in our lives. We should learn to do things what we expect others to do. We should not think that we are more holy than others. We, all of us are sinners who are seeking the face of God. When it comes to doing work, let all of us do. Whatever we do in the church, let all of us do. Whatever we do in the whole house, let all of us do. If you have a house guy or a houseboy, don't just sit because you pay him. I am sure that where we are employed, even our employers do those things. One yes as a viewer. Especially those who are employed by Indians. Indians will wake up even much earlier than us. And they will be there even to open the doors. They will be there working with us. It is only Africans who are employed who want to leave their jackets and coats on the seats and go working and leave the poor people overburden them with work. Those are the Pharisees that God is talking about today. That we must be careful in whatever we do. And then God reminds them in what theologians call Shema. In Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6 is famously known Shema because it's like the it's like the what is the like the anthems of the Jewish. When a child is born, these are the words every Jew will speak to his child. A child is not able to talk, but is born. And every single of the day, every single day of their lives, this is the word they narrate in the lives of their children. And these are the words they, it says. It is chapter 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. It is chapter 6, verse 4. That is known as Shema in the Jewish culture. These are the words the Jewish narrate to the lives of their children. For sure, if you love yourself, if you love others the way you love yourself, you will not overburden the others. Is it true or wrong? If you love your others the way you love yourself, you will not neglect mercy. You will not neglect justice. You will not neglect faithfulness. If you love others the way you love yourself, you will not focus on physical or external righteousness, but you will focus on internal righteousness. You will focus on what comes out of you, not what comes inside you. You will focus by to be a living example by what comes out of you if you love yourself, if you love others the way you love yourself. 
and this is the verse that the Jewish narrate to their children from age zero to age eleven. They keep on narrating this word, each symbol of their days. Each day of their lives. They keep on telling them, Hear all Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all you are, with all your soul, and with all your strength. When you do this, you will never need to be told to do something. You will be self-motivated in doing it. And therefore, the Pharisees were not self-motivated. They were motivated to do it because of what was they were getting in return. They were, self, they were not self-motivated. There was something that was motivating them. I want to beseech you, beloved, that we need to be self-motivated when it comes to serving God. We need to be self-motivated when it comes to serving our families. We need to be self-motivated when we, we are called to do work even where we are employed or businesses we do. And let me tell you, the time you will be self-motivated even to your business, your business will flourish. The challenge is that you are motivated with the money that will come out. And that is why your business is not, is not motivated. You are tired even in the morning because you are not motivated. But when your mind is that I am serving, doing this business because I'm doing it for God, you will always be self-motivated. You will wake up early, you will sleep, work without having challenges. You will serve God without, you will be asking, what can I do? For see this Sunday, what can I do? I am free, I am available, what can I do? But these people were doing to be seen. If you are doing to be seen, you are not seeing for you are not doing it for God. You are doing for yourself. If you are giving to be seen, you are not giving to God. For, for God, you are giving for the sake of yourself. So if you want to give or to do something so that the pastor would see you, then you are not doing for God. You are doing for yourself. So we are learning that we should learn to do, to be self-motivated and to do it for God. Because if we can narrate these words, here, now I want to replace, and I want to say this word all of us, and replace where there is Israel. I will, I let me give an example and say, here, O Jackson. I, let's begin, as I will say, you repeat after me. If I say, here, O I am here, O Jackson. The Lord our God. The Lord is one. Love the Lord your God. With all your heart. With all your soul. And with all your strength. It is not Israel. It is Jackson. It is each one of us. If we do that, we shall be self-motivated in whatever we do. And when we do that, the Lord will bless us. Father, we thank you and we bless you for your word. We exalt you that you are calling us and giving us this contra contrast between the Pharisee and the tax collector. Cause us, Lord, to learn from the tax collector so that we may be people who know that whatever we do, we are not doing it for ourselves. We are not doing it for self-glorification, but we are doing it for the glorification of God. Lord, bless us and forgive us where we have gone astray to do it for self-justification. Lord, forgive us. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, thank you.